When it comes to testing, of course, designing test cases play a very vital role. And of course, it would be really important for us to define that what count of test cases would be sufficient enough to address that how much testing is enough. We may need different number of test cases, but at the same time, we also have to take care that whatever number of test cases you prepare, are they efficient enough to validate the functionality and also to deal with a lot of other factors. So let's talk more about this today. Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and today we are talking about exhaustive testing is impractical. This is one of the other principle out of seven principle that exhaustive testing is impossible to be conducted or we also say it as exhaustive testing is impractical to be conducted. But before we talk about the principle in detail, let us understand the most important component of this principle that is what is exhaustive testing. Now exhaustive testing is something which generally allows you to create all possible combination of test cases. That means that whatever comes to your mind, you go on creating, putting it on the paper. As a tester, you might be very highly skilled to prepare enough an amount of test cases which actually test different functionalities on the product. But of course, when you talk about creating the test cases, there is no limit to that. If I give you certain time and I give you an instruction that this is the scenario what you have, this is the requirement which we have to test and you have two days of time with you and write test cases for this. Probably you go ahead and start writing test cases and you come up with like around 50 or 60 test cases to me. Next day morning, if I come back and ask you that, do you think I, you know, you can write some more test cases? Then you say, yeah, but do I have time? Yes, of course, you do have time, but yeah, I'll give you another one day. Can you write some more test cases? So this journey is what we actually continue because a tester is qualified to write test cases. And if I go on providing uh, conditions to it or different timing or timelines to the tester, he or she will go on writing and that will never stop. Now, when the test case preparation will not stop, then how would you guarantee uh, an execution of that? What if you create probably like more than 10, 20,000 20, test cases and you do not have a commitment to execute all of them? So what's the point of writing it? And that's where the principle comes into picture that exhaustive testing is impossible or impractical to be conducted. It is possible in terms of writing it, but within a project, when we have tight guidelines, we have some schedules to follow, we have time release deadlines, a lot of factors like that. So we do not try with all possible combination. Now team, when you talk about combinations, it simply means that when you have two different inputs on a particular page and you try with several combination, permutation and combination of that. Now trying with all possible combination is what you call it as exhaustive testing. And in testing, the principle says exhaustive testing is impractical. That means there's no end to it. There's no limit for it. If you want, you can go on doing, but as per the commitments of the project, you have to do something limited. Now, probably some of you may ask that, all right, so what should I do when uh, we come across testing? And of course, we cannot do exhaustive testing, then how to be sure enough being a good tester? How should I be confident that the number of test cases what I've prepared or the count of test cases what I've prepared is efficient enough to validate the functionality? and to release the product further. Then let me tell you, we'll be talking about something called as test case design techniques, like equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, straight transition testing, and there are many more techniques like that. So the answer of exhaustive testing is impossible was given by the test techniques, that techniques will be the one which will help you to minimize your test cases, but at the same time, not compromising with the quality. So you will reduce the number of test cases, create a limited number of test cases, but not compromising with the confidence, quality or finding the difference. Now, I think all of us understand very well that why exhaustive testing is called impossible or why it is called impractical to be conducted in industries in real time. 
So that's all from this particular episode team. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and of course had something new to understand from here. Should you have anything beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them. We'll be getting back to you with another episode with a lot of learnings. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.